us plant protein, us eat, those of us eating a higher protein plant diet have, are maintaining muscle mass and strength as we age, and we're still keeping our IGF-1 favorable. So we're able to eat more higher protein plant foods like, you know, like quinoa and soybeans and broccoli, right? And, and black beans and lentils and things like that to keep our protein, our athletic powers and keep ourselves strong and, you know, weightlifting and running and doing that, being agile and doing things for fitness and having a diet of high in protein without having to use animal products because they have different biologic effects, just like oil, just like walnut oil has a different biological effect than eating a walnut. So the lower levels of IGF-1 is the goal. You want your levels to be below 160 or so, you know, and, but if your levels get too low, obviously with too low of diet, with too low in protein as you age, then it can lead to frailty and poor health. And as a person gets frail and poor protein exposure in later life could lead to poor immune function, increasing risk of cancer or even infectious related death. Now, nuts and seeds are very important to reemphasize this because I continue to see this process where people are promoting myths about nuts and seeds and make giving people things like, oh, I heard, I heard just yesterday, one of my patient, one, a client of mine said her doctor who was a plant-based eater, a vegan at one of these plant-based health centers, told her to, that she was that her cholesterol was high and she should cut out the nuts to lower her cholesterol. And I just want to make be very clear about this because we know right now that nuts and seeds are linked to dramatic lower morbidity and mortality from heart disease. So all the studies corroborate each other. We have a high degree of corroboration means that um, different parts of the world, different numbers of people, long-term studies, large numbers of people show a dramatic um, reduction of cardiovascular death and all cause mortality, even cancer deaths. So nuts and seeds are tremendously helpful. And that means health of people who have heart disease. They don't raise cholesterol, they lower cholesterol and, the, and, the, and they don't cause weight gain. They cause weight loss compared to an equal size amount of carbohydrate or other food they're compared against. In other words, sure, if you snack on nuts and eating huge amounts in addition to your regular diet, anything you eat in excess can cause weight gain. But if you're using them with meals and not as snacks and they're part of the meal, and isocaloric means you took out some other food and you put that calories from nuts and seeds in, then they cause more weight loss and more beneficial cardiovascular reversal and, and safety. Let me review some of those studies and data, okay? And I wrote a medical journal study on this and I, you can I'll reference that journal if you wanna review more than 50 references documenting this. So here's describing, here's a meta-analysis. I'm describing a tremendously decrease in cardiovascular death in people eating nuts and seeds one serving a day. And then I'm referring down below to the Adventist Health Study 2, which corroborated what they found in Adventist Health Study 1, was about a 40% reduction in cardiovascular deaths and a huge reduction in all-cause mortality in those people who were eating in the highest quintile of nut and seed intake. And, they, and that was held true in all cohorts, meaning young in, um, you know, in different races and different sexes and in flexitarians, pescatarians and near vegans and vegans in all categories, nut and seed intake was correlated in a dose dependent manner to enhancement in lifespan. So here's the hazard, hazard ratios for um, CVD or cardiovascular disease mortality in Adventist Health Study 2 by the quintile of protein from nuts and seeds, which showed that in the first group, not eating that much had a highest level amount of death, premature death, and as people went up to the highest intake of nut and seed, they had a 60% lowering of cardiovascular deaths. And the, this, uh, and of course, um, this held true in vegan populations and it showed also that lower fat vegans had um, higher risk of death, which was also corroborated by the PrevMed study will show later that low fat diets and extreme low fat diets had more premature death than diets that even had, even adding some olive oil to the diet had some benefit compared to a diet that low in fat, but adding nuts and seed had the most benefit. Even the PrevMed study showed that in this large study comparing olive oil to nuts and low fat diets compare all these, that the highest longest lifespan and the lowest rates of cardiovascular death were found in people who were eating nuts and seeds at baseline and then randomized to the group told to eat nuts and seeds, not olive oil. So those people who are eating nuts and seeds at baseline randomized to do eat olive oil or randomized to eat low fat, or in other words, the group who are eating olive oil. So it's a very complicated study, but of course the highest lifespan occurred in people eating nuts and seeds who were then randomized to continue eating nuts and seeds. Okay, so should you avoid nuts and seeds to lose weight? Should we avoid nuts if you have heart disease? 
Well, these ideas have been thoroughly tested, investigated, and disproven in every study that looks at strong endpoints, meaning that nuts and seeds lower cholesterol, they lower body weight, they reduce cardiovascular deaths, and they improve diabetic parameters. So there are a lot of myths, and we can here's a pooled analysis of 25 trials showing nuts and seeds have a dose-dependent relationship to lower LDL cholesterol, particularly oxidized LDL, because they buy because the sterols and stanols in nuts and seeds attract LDL in the digestive tract and pull out LDL, particularly oxidized LDL into the stool. And here's a, um, we're talking about the right amount of nuts and seeds, which means eating a half an ounce to one ounce per meal, which leads to a one and a half to three ounce consumption based on body weight size and whether you're heavy or whether you're somebody like me who needs more or somebody who's overweight needs less and needs to eat lower caloric intake. But in, the, in, the, in that quintile I showed you in the, the slide here, where the highest lifespan was in people in the highest quintile, they were eating, the highest quintile was more than an ounce and a half a day. So the minimal of the, so the minimal amount of nuts and seeds, people should use about a half an ounce with meal because a half an ounce with the meal also maximizes absorption of the anti-cancer phytochemicals from the vegetables, from the beans, from the other things you're eating because the fat soluble vitamins and the phytochemicals are a heightened absorption by you including some fat in the diet and some fat in that meal is even more enhanced. And the group in that had the highest mortality was people eating less than half an ounce a day. So less than a half an ounce is not enough an ounce is okay, but an ounce and a half or more is best. And my career, the last 35 years, I've you know had taken care of tens of thousands of people with obesity and advanced heart disease, tens of thousands of people who have gotten who've lowered their blood pressure, lowered, reversed their diabetes, lost weight, and reversed their high, their heart disease or high blood pressure and lowered their cholesterol with the inclusion of nuts and seeds. There's no need to exclude nuts and seeds and increase risk of death to get results. So we're saying here, here's a systemic review of, of six meta-analysis, six systemic reviews of all the studies published since 2018, showed that nut-enriched nut diets show decrease of body fat and body fat mass. And here's a 2023 review article in the journal Nutrients, showed consistent evidence, showed benefits for weight control and prevention of long-term weight gain especially when substituted from equal amount of calories for carbohydrate and leading to sustained weight loss because there's some effect in eating nuts and seeds and making you not feel like snacking, not getting hungry or not needing to eat too much in the next meal. So they have, so nuts and seeds have beneficial effects of keep helping people be satisfied with lower caloric intake. And that mixture of having some beans and some nuts and seeds and some green vegetables with lunch and with dinner make you feel satisfied with the more normal sized portions on your plate. You don't need to eat large amounts of food because it's very because they're very satisfying. Whereas low, very low fat diets are comparatively unsafe. They still might be better than the American diet and still maybe show results in some sick people, but they're not gonna be the diet that's gonna maximize this person's ability to live a longer life without problems developing. Because we know we have and can enhance mitochondrial function and ion channel and transport mechanisms when you have especially ALA incorporated from, from, from flax seeds and walnuts um, and offer, and these offering protection against calcium overload, which and other mechanisms that have been shown to increase the irritability of the myocytes or the heart cells. So we show that in these studies like the physician's health study, where they showed a 60% reduction in sudden cardiac death from people eating an ounce of nuts and seeds uh, on the average, an ounce a day, showed a tremendous reduction of death caused by an irregular heartbeat or a cardiac arrhythmia. And now we're seeing also in many in studies, a dose dependent relationship in reducing the risk of atrial fibrillation in people eating nuts and seeds versus a very low fat diet. And the Prevamid study I mentioned corroborated that that the lowest mortality and lowest cardiovascular event and longest life occurs, of course, in people eating nuts and seeds and randomized to continue nut and seed intake, not olive oil intake. So the low-fat diet had the worst long-term outcomes. So this idea or this myth that's been perpetuated and continued to be um, advertised in the, in the vegan or plant-based community that fat is the reason people get fat is just not true. And the ultra-low-fat diets are particularly dangerous ways to lose weight. <laughs>